Uh, we love the album. Thank you very much. We've been listening this week. Um, it's quite, well, would you say it's quite a different sound to what people would be expecting? Mo um, <clears throat> I'd say most of it is. Depends what people are expecting. I don't know. Mm. When I was making it, I didn't think it was that different at all. Well, because you're, I was seeing that it evolve over a few years. But then when I have actually played the finished thing to people, they were kind of, there was silence after some of the tracks. And uh, it was only then that I realised how different it actually was, you know. And um, But I think that's a good thing. Mm. I, I was going to say, what thing. do you feel when you feel that silence? Is that a good thing, like they've been absorbing? Are you thinking? Oh. If you're unsure about what you're doing, silence is not a good thing. But I'm 100% confident with this one. And uh, as I am with my, if I'm playing it to people, it means I've kind of signed off on it and I'm, and I'm happy with it. But this one in particular... I don't care if nobody likes it. I love it. It's a know. great album. It's a very, very upbeat album and it's quite it's got quite a dancey feel as well. Yeah, uh, well <clears throat> I have to say in this day and age, it's very easy, particularly in the game that I'm in, the guitar music or whatever you want to call it, to write angst and you know, because the world is, is is not in the best shape. I think with a song like Holy Mountain, for instance, which is just full of joy and it's almost revolutionary these mm. days because um, rock music or whatever you want to call it, it seems to be a lot of shouting about some unspecified injustice that's going on with these. Like Dave Grohl, for instance, what's he all about? <laughs> what's that he man knows about? nothing, does <laughs> he? He's not shouting about anything. What's he shouting about? And um, Green Day, what are they all about? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like rock has killed rock and roll almost. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a pop album, I suppose. I guess, yeah, but it's very it's very upbeat. <laughs> um, no, when you talk about your wife, that is the way that every woman wants their other half to talk about it. Oh, them. really? It's so lovely. I tagged my uh, boyfriend in a post of you talking about your wife because it was so lovely as a sort of, you know, oh. guide to this is how you... He right, never does okay. that. You know, he well, some, yeah. he's just sometimes <laughs> he does, but it's, it's very few and far between. And I was like, look how Noel Gallagher does it. This is how you... Right. Yeah. Um, so She's amazing, though. Yeah, you see, look, you see, this is just the way you talk about it. It's so lovely. Mm. And I feel like the album is a very loving album. Is the, because I love She Taught Me How to Fly. Is that, is that about um, that? <clears throat> Well, I, yeah, well, all songs, all the best songs anyway, have a dual meaning to them. But it, if, the, all, the, 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 most of the songs started out as these instrumentals and I took them away when I was making, was on my last tour. And I kind of listened to them a lot and it, a, a kind of an, an idea will suggest itself, and these songs were so up, and they just suggested, I don't know, the the joy and beauty of women, I suppose. I don't know, and I, uh, and of course, if I'm going to project anything onto a woman, it will be the one that I spend my every waking day with. But um, she announced to me, we were having a discussion. Uh, one one night round round our house, she was some of her friends were around, and I was upstairs watching TV and coming down. And I again got dragged into the kitchen and ended up getting drunk with them all. And there's a conversation about feminism, and I was like, feminism, whatever, you know. And my wife announced, she said, "But you're a feminist," and I never thought of it like that, you know. And I was kind of like, and then she listed all the reasons why I was a feminist. What did she say? Well, I didn't say anything. No, what did she? Why did she say that you're a feminist? Uh, because I see women as equals, and you know, and I don't, I don't see the difference between the two. Do you know what I mean? So, did you feel like feminism is a sort of word that is associated with? Uh, it's not something that you would have associated yourself with, I suppose. Before. I didn't, rea I didn't realize I was one yeah. until until I was I was badgered by six drunk women around the table <laughs> telling me that actually you are one, and I was like, Ooh, okay. Um, but that's a good thing. That's great. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you said. At the beginning of that answer, all good songs have a dual meaning. What do you mean by that? Well, um, if I write a song, it means something personal to me, but you shouldn't be aware of that. It should say something about you. Right. Because if it's so much about me, how are you going to get out? You know, you cannot, you cannot, how could you let that song into your life? It's like when John Lennon, all his songs, he would, he would, tell you exactly what they were about his childhood and it's like okay so that's a song about your childhood so that means nothing to me so we'll move on now um <clears throat> and so i think all 
this is my personal opinion, all the great songs, they have to tell you something about yourself. But clearly, a, a man who lives in a in a mansion in Los Angeles is not writing a song about you specifically. But I think the trick is to make it seem like you are, you know. But also, you sing it. You can only sing it like you mean it, so it means something to you. So that's what I mean. But you don't want more than two meanings because that confuses people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by that. You know what I mean? I really am. Uh, that people take songs and insert them into their lives and it means everything to them do you know what i mean mm. um like don't look back in anger being the prime example of how that song and its meaning has shifted down the last 20 odd years to where it is now you know and it's something completely different than where it started off in when a, a rainy night in paris when i wrote it and passed out drunk and then woke up the next day and kind of sang it back and thought oh that'll do you know what i mean that's pretty good that song did all right as and well. It, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's taken on this this life of its own now. So it's um, it's a fascinating thing. So when you are on tour, you've been on tour with UT. Mm. Uh, how is that different to how it used to be? Yeah, I'll leave this to your imagination. Touring in the nineties with Oasis when you're in your twenties, mm. surely you must be able to grasp the concept. How it's vastly different <laughs> now <laughs> as a fifty-year-old with three kids. Mm. And you talked about the U2 tour. That was um, that was. Honestly, the closest thing you'll ever get to being on holiday. I mean, it was like just a like, good holiday, like a relaxing oh. holiday, or like a wild life. Uh, I wouldn't say it was relaxing, but those guys, they do. This is how tough it is at the top, and they're at the very, very top. It's like they'll do a gig, and then they'll be like four days off, and then they might do another gig, maybe a week off, and then another couple of gigs, and then another four days off. Uh, I woke up, there was, was a period on that tour where I woke up in bed fully clothed every morning with the phone ringing and my tour manager saying, the van left 10 minutes ago. Because we were having such a great time. We were kind of, you know, we'd amble down to the stadium at like four, couldn't be bothered sound checking, have something to eat, get on the stage at, you know, eight, finish a quarter to nine, be like hammered by half nine, yeah. watching you two. It was like being on holiday. It was brilliant. One and of the best four days off. And then I four days off. Yeah, it was, uh, I got to say, out of all the tours I've done, and I've done some great, great, great tours, that was probably the most fun you could squeeze out of a tour was on that with them lot. They like to have a good time. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't even know the half of it. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't know well, the half. And I'm not, 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 not going to tell you the half of it. <laughs> 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 Can we ask you about, just talking about Instagram earlier, um, McConaughey Monday? Oh, yeah. What's McConaughey Monday? I mean, we all appreciate a picture of Matthew McConaughey, but... Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, Is that like a man crush thing? How do I say this? Let's just say that... How do I put it like this? He blew my mind. He literally blew my mind. So you've met him recently, for the first time, or is he? A I happened to be at a wedding with him recently, and I can assure you, he's one of the top dudes I've ever met. Why? Because he's he's like a character from Star Wars. <laughs> he was spewing out this Texan wisdom. Can't tell you. He's on got a lovely voice, hasn't he? I'm fascinated by that guy. I've no, I don't even, I, I, you know, I, I like <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street. I think that's the only thing I've ever seen him on, on True Detective. Oh yeah, that was that was amazing. So did you feel like he was one of the coolest person people you've ever? Oh, without a doubt. Really? Oh yeah, and the funniest. Did he outcool Noel Gallagher? It's not that easy. I mean, it's not that difficult mm. to outcool me. I've got to say, particularly, really? at, particularly at a wedding. <laughs> I'm not very cool. We were crisp aficionados yeah, in my cool. house. Oh, what's your crisp? Crisp of choice. That's like saying what's your favourite Beatles song. I mean, you must have a top three. Th top, top three, three. Chris. Okay, <coughs> you can't. Okay. The beef flavored monster munch. This is in no particular order, right, and good. I can see okay. you grimacing already. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, felt, I, felt, I felt really uncomfortable. But, but you're a girl. No, on, okay. They're the, the, the yeah, the yeah, they're, they're the yellow yeah, ones. Mm. They're like yeah. from my childhood. They're unbelievable. Yeah. Now, any of the square crisps. Now we're talking. Uh, as my seven-year-old would say, are totally legit, right? <laughs> but for me, it's the salt and vinegar ones. They are the most legit, yep. Sonny. Agreed, yeah. Can I high-five you on that? I'm down okay, with that. And 
If you don't like a what's it, you've got no soul. Oh, you always get bored halfway through the packet. No, because they melt in your mouth. Yeah. There's many ways to eat them. And you, and the and the packets are so small these days, you can iron out three or four of them with a hangover. Can I throw in something a little controversial? If it's this? a skip, no chance. Okay, I skip across my mind and then I realise... Fish flavoured crisps is mental. <laughs> They don't say. I don't think they're that fishy. Well, the prawn, it's a prawn sweet. lives. A prawn lives in the sea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, You're going to go posh, aren't you? Get no, no, I'm not going posh. I'm going. I'm going for uh, for snaps, tomato snaps. You no, can only get them I'm at. at them. You can only get them at really naff garages. They're not very mainstream no. anymore. They no. were big in the sort of late '80s, early '90s. You never had a tomato snap. No, I think so. Oh, if I could nip out to a shop, I'd get you some snaps. Tomato, f- just just tomato. Yeah, thing. yeah, but it's it's quite a mild what about you? tomato. What are you saying? Well, I was, I was going to go posh. I was going to go kettle crisps. Uh, oh, I don't mind them Tyrrells things are good though, yeah, aren't they? The, they're sea, good. The, yeah. salt, the salt and vinegar ones are good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't go and buy them because I don't know. But if if there's Pringles at a party, I mean, you, well, you're unstoppable, Pringles. isn't it, really? A bit mainstream, aren't they? Mm. They have these crisps in uh, over in Southeast Asia. And when I go on tour, my missus gets me to bring back tons, and they're called Twisties. So, if anybody's listening from the firm that makes Twisties, Twisties. what flavours of Twisties? They do now. The chicken flavoured crisp is a bit of an odd one because, well, it is, isn't it? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's not something it's I confusing. gravitate to. Yeah. Yeah. It works with walkers. I think it works with walkers. I'm not no, but these Twisties have a chicken flavour, and you know what? They actually taste like chicken. Which is good, right. and then they have uh, like a spi- the obligatory spicy flavour, and then there's a plain flavour. Oh. Very nice. They have them in Australia as well. Twisties, mate. I feel like someone should have brought up Frazzles. Actually, they're worth a mention. Yeah, frazzles. They stick yeah. in your teeth, though. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But they so, do do, so does a what's it and a what's it? Um, no. you know, finger admin of a what's it because that you get that all over oh. your. It's yeah, so but that's the best bit. Come on. Well, I've got one. I've got one. Um, <coughs> if we could just get no, like a sort of one one word or a sentence on on some of these social media. Unnecessary and exhausting. Vegans. Blaggers. Blaggers? Why blaggers? I've got a girl in my band who claims she's a vegan. I was like, but that's a leather jacket. She's going, well, yeah, I know. And I was like, right, out, next. <laughs> okay, Donald Trump. Hilarious. Mm. Uh, and your most used apps? Are there any apps you're addicted to? There's or an app on, it's called, ri- okay, it, it's the word radio. With like five letter O's, so it's like radio, right? And what it is, this is fascinating. It's just you buy the app, it's about a fiver or whatever it is, and up comes this little map of the world, and you can tap on any country, and then a, a date comes up like a decade. So you take the 60s, tap on France, and it will play you what was on the radio in the 60s in France or the 70s or the 80s it's insane who's put that together well some genius has done that Noel Gallagher has put it together (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) charging a fortune for (laughs) it (laughs) it's genius yeah radio Radio. it's it's, uh, it's spectacular I feel like we should have had that it will say brought to you by NG I can I can I can tell you now that (coughs) get on to the 70s in Germany and France Unbelievable. Yeah, um, is there anything you wanted to clear up? Did you? I know you heard the story about the guy in Swindon licking windows. Apparently, a Noel Gallagher look-alike. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Just checking. That's nothing to. Wasn't you? It wasn't me. Swigging no, white I, lightning. I, I happened to be in Brazil at the time. Um, I'm not sure. It certainly. I mean, are there Noel Gallagher look-alikes? I don't know if it was a deliberate lookalike, as in he works professionally as your lookalike, or it was a guy who just looks like you. So someone's called the police and said, there's a guy here licking my window. <laughs> what does he look like? He looks like that Noel Gallagher. <laughs> so presumably the copper went, you mean Liam? <laughs> Virgin Breakfast with Sam and Amy.